Ron Niles here with a video response to Presh Talwarkar's video called Ted Ed's Frog Riddle is Wrong on his Mind Your Decisions channel. I'll start out by saying how much I like his videos. In fact, I agree with his premise that the frog riddle is wrong. At the very least, I think it's poorly specified. I take issue, however, with the way Presh seems to go in another unjustified direction. I don't want to spend a lot of time summarizing things because you can click on the links to watch the actual videos, but essentially you're poisoned and dying in the jungle, and you need to lick the back of a female frog in order to get the antidote. Males and females are equally likely. You see one of the frogs on the stump and head over to lick it, but suddenly you hear the distinctive croak of a male frog coming from a different direction, and you look over to see two frogs there. You have to choose between going over to the two frogs and licking them both, or going to the initial frog. As Presh points out, the video wants you to conclude that there is at least one male frog in the pair of two, but there is a difference between knowing that there is at least one male and hearing the distinctive croak of a male frog. As an analogy, Presh relates this to the situation where you ask, what are the chances you have a female if you have two children where at least one is a male, and what are the chances you have a female if you have two children where at least one is a male born on Tuesday? Presh explained this correctly. And some people in his comments seem to have trouble with it, and that's understandable. I like to use a visual aid in a case like this, where you have two independent events and the probabilities can be multiplied. Let's put the probabilities on top and left side of a square. On the top, I'll put the probabilities for the first child, a boy born on Tuesday with P equals 1 14th, a boy not born on Tuesday with P equals 6 14th, and a girl born any day of the week with P equals 7 14th. On the left side, I'll do the same thing for the second child, and since the events are independent, we'll multiply them and get rectangles and squares within the big square. First, let's illustrate the reduced sample space from having at least one boy born on a Tuesday. We're now restricted to the two narrow strips along the top and the left because having a male child born on Tuesday is kind of a rare event. By counting squares, you can see that we've got 27 out of the 196 squares shaded. We know that we're in one of those 27 equally likely squares. Of these 27 squares, there are 7 on the top right and 7 on the bottom left where the other child is a girl. So the chances of having a girl when you have two kids, at least one of which is a boy born on Tuesday, is 14 27 almost 52%. Next, Press tries to relate this to the situation with the male frog croaking, and here's where I disagree with his assumptions. He boils this down to four equally likely events. Male male with first male croaking, male male with second male croaking, male female with male croaking, and female male with male croaking, concluding that it's equally likely to have male male as male female. And I don't think you can say that these are all equally likely. I'll give my interpretation on how you might proceed with this problem, and it's too bad that people like Presh and I are making assumptions in order to solve this. It shows that the problem is open-ended, ill-defined, and subject to interpretation, and that's on the people at TED-Ed. It's their fault. This problem should never have been presented. With just a little extra thought, they could have had a much more ironclad presentation. For instance, if they stated that two female frogs will fight when in close proximity, but males don't fight, you would be able to conclusively state that all possibilities except female-female are equally likely. So here's what I think. There was a period of time for which the frogs were silent, and then you heard a croak. Do female frogs croak? There's no reason to think so, so let's rule that out. I think the best way to model frogs croaking is to think of it that during a given period of time, there's a probability pre that a male frog will croak, and that probability, of course, increases with time, but let's assume for the time period in question, any male frog would croak with probability p. Let's assume now that p equals 1 7th because that's analogous to the problem we just discussed of having a female given you have a male born on Tuesday. With p equals 1 7th having a male born on Tuesday, it's the same thing as having a frog croaking. So we're close to 50% in that case. But here's the problem, number one, with making that assumption. We heard only one frog croak, so can we rule out the case where both frogs croak? That's a small square, but eliminating it increases the chances that we have a female from 14 27 to 14 26. Now, what if the probability that a male frog croaks is not rare? What if it's actually higher than 1 7? How about a half? Now I'm up to a 4 7 chance of having a female if I interpret that croak as at least one male. However, since I only heard one croak, maybe I should rule out the square in which both frogs croaked, and now that's becoming significant. If I exclude that from the sample space, I'm back to a two-third chance of having a female, which is what Ted Ed claims, although this is definitely not the way that Ted Ed wants us to come up with that answer. Finally, 
Someone in Precious Comments asks, what if male frogs croak all the time? And that's a great question because it brings P closer to one, in which case you would get two thirds if you couldn't tell whether there were two frogs croaking instead of one. And by the way, should you take into account that the absence of croaking from that first solitary frog means that the frog is more likely, maybe certain, to be a female? In fact, if you assume male frogs croak all the time so you can get the answer that Ted Ed wants straight up, then you have to conclude that the frog on the stump is very likely to be female because she's not croaking. In short, TEDx presentation is badly defined. I've seen many people argue that in problems like this, Occam's razor applies, and that basically states that you need to choose the simplest of explanations in the absence of information. We have no information about how often or how likely it is to hear frogs croak, so we're supposed to put that aside and take the simplest explanation that there's at least one male. Still, Presh and I find it hard to take that leap, especially when they could have come up with a better way to rule out exactly the female-female combination by stating, for instance, that two females will always fight when near each other. I'm Ron Niles, and that's my opinion, and that's a shame, because math should never depend on opinion.